Heavenly Father, we come one more time to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for all the many blessings you have bestowed on us. Thank you for allowing us to come together, Lord, to learn your word, Lord. Now I ask you, Lord, to open our eyes so we can see what you have for us, Lord, to remove ourselves so we won't see it as man will see it, but we will see it as the Holy Spirit will see it, see it Lord. And you will lead us and guide us in the right way, Lord. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Um, Amen. Like I said, this week we're on Solomon, on the blessings. We've been reading First King, chapter eight. From, we're gonna we've been reading from fifty four all the way up to sixty one. So I'm sorry, sixty six. The last few weeks we talked about the blessings for the Israelites. Solomon asked for the blessings for the Israelites. Um, how he rose up from the altar, how he finished his prayer, and the significance of his blessing the Israelites. A uh, couple of weeks, we talked about of the Lord, section B. I'm sorry, let me go back up so you guys can see it. We talked about of the Lord, section B, the praises, acknowledgement, how God has given the Israelites rest. God is a God of promise, that keeps his promise. He never fails. We were, we were praising God last week of all his wonderful blessings and how precious he is to us and how precious he was to the Israelites. No matter what, he never forsake them. So that was last week. This week, we're picking up on section two for the Lord's presence. Okay, and that's going to come from verses 57 to 61. So if we'll start reading somebody volunteer reading First King chapter 8. 57 to 61. Okay. I, can, I can read it. Okay. But I'm, re I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Is that okay? That's fine. Mm -hmm. Can I read? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so it's NL, NLT. Okay. Yeah, so um, 57 to through 61. Yeah. So it, may the Lord our God be with us as he was with our with our ancestors may he never leave us or abandon us may he give us the desires to do his will the desire to do his will in everything and to obey all the commands decrees and regulation he gave our ancestors and may these words that i have prayed in the presence of the lord be before him constantly day and night so that the Lord our God may give justice to, to me and to his people, Israel, according to each day's needs. Then the people all over the earth will know that the Lord alone is God and there is no other. And may you be completely faithful to the Lord our God. May you always obey his decrees and commands just as you are doing today. Amen. Amen. That's that's the end of that. All right, amen. This is a good lesson. Um, we're gonna we're gonna understand the scriptures like we normally do. So it's gonna take us probably all day to do this lesson. Um, the first question that comes out from for the Lord's present verses 57, 58. It says, may the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us nor forsake us. Why ask God to be with them? Why was Solomon asking God to be with them? Is the question. There's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. This is a study, so any, any input would be fine. Okay. The okay. way I'm just going to, I'm just going to answer it the way I answered it. Uh, because I did this Bible study, at least I did the A part. I didn't, I didn't do the B part. Um, the way I answered this is that because in the old covenant, um, the spirit of the of God came, and as as, as He willed, the spirit of the Lord came um, often and left often as uh, as the situation needed. And I have, uh, and I have judges. I have judges uh, three ten. Three ten. If okay, we can turn to that. One. 
Right, so we got a Judges 310. Say that again. You said Judges 310? Yeah, Judges 310. Uh, yes, 1 Samuel 16, 13, and Ezekiel 11, 5. I'll give us a few minutes to turn to it. It's just uh, examples of when the Spirit came. Okay, give us a minute. You know, I'm slow. So it takes me a little longer than it takes you in memory. So give me a minute. <laughs> Okay, you said Judges 310, First Samuel what? 613. First Samuel 1613. Oh, you 16? I thought you said 6. So 1613? No, just, uh, yeah, yeah. Judges uh, 310. Judges. Right. First Samuel, you say 1613 now? And a sequel yes, 1613. Okay. Hold on. That is correct. Some of us still got the old flipping Bibles, so <laughs> hold on. <laughs> 310. All right, so we're going to Judges 310? Yes. All right. And if you can read it, that would, I would appreciate it. All right. Amplify, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel. He went out to war, and the Lord gave Cushan Rish, Rishatham, is it king of Mesopotam, uh, into his hand. And he prevailed over Cush Rishatham, and the land was at rest for oppression for 40 years. Then Othaniel, the son of Cush, died. Just, yeah. That's it. So are you going to give them a little run down why the spirit of the lord came upon him are you going to give them the quick summary of this um i'm not going to, uh, the most important thing is to see that the spirit of the lord came upon people in the uh -huh. old testament the spirit uh, i'm not going to uh, um, give the backstories of everyone it's okay. just to, to show you that in each situation the spirit right. of the lord came to do something right it came it came upon a person, it came on a person, it came with a person um, to do a particular task. Okay. And and so um, if you look at, um, if you also look at 1 Samuel 16, 13, you would also see that example uh, where the Spirit of the Lord came upon David to, um, as the next king. Mm -hmm. So. 1 Samuel 16, 13. <clears throat> no, no, no. First Samuel, from first Samuel 16, um, um, yeah, first Samuel 16, 13. That's what we want to read next. And then, uh, and then there's, we're going to read first Samuel uh, 16, 14, but under another, another example. Okay, first Samuel 16, 13, uh, Amplified. Okay. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. So Samuel came to anoint uh, um, um, with oil, David, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David at that time. Um, and it's, uh, it's always uh, the spirit of the Lord is 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 likened onto oil because he he just makes everything easier to do. It makes it easier. He he enables the person to do the work that he's uh, uh, he's upon that person to do. So um, and then uh, Ezekiel eleven. Adola, you didn't want to read the fourteen. The difference of why they were act, he was asking because there were fourteen explains the spirit departing also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say the example, the one example I wanted to point out uh, in First Samuel sixteen fourteen is when the spirit left. So um, uh, so the, the everybody in the Old Testament in the Old Covenant they knew um, the spirit of the Lord came, and the spirit of the Lord leaves. 
Right. And so uh, that was why when, when David sinned, he was so afraid. He was like, Lord, don't take your spirit from me. Don't take yeah. your spirit. We just, we just saw we just saw the example where the spirit of the Lord came and stayed upon him for his life. And he knew, he, David was very smart. He knew that there was a difference in his life. Before the spirit of the Lord came, he couldn't do hardly anything. Now the spirit of the Lord came on, upon him. He was able to fight the bear, fight the lion. He was able to defeat Goliath. He was able to, he knew that the, the spirit of the Lord made a difference in his life. So when he sinned, he was so afraid that God was going to leave him. And he, he also saw how God left Saul and what became of Saul. And so he, he was afraid. He was like, Lord, don't take your spirit from me. And God didn't take his spirit from him. But God punished him other, in other ways, but God didn't take his spirit from him. Um, and that's why it's appropriate for Solomon in this prayer to say, be with us, Lord. Draw near to us. Let your spirit abide here, and that's how that's how um, that's how God anointed the temple. God and uh, put His spirit there. God put the spirit of the Lord in the temple, and um, that was why His eye was always upon the sacrifices that were made in the temple. And and God, when when the, when a person would bring sacrifices to the temple, and they would be sacrificed. The blessing, the physical blessing of the Lord will follow that person out of that, um, that temple and bless his life. And so it was appropriate for God to, for God to ask, um, Lord, be with us as you were with our ancestors. Um, and, and, he, and may he never leave us for sake. Now, this may leave us no forsake us that he was praying um the promise they were praying the promise that was given to um to joshua um and if we'll go to deuteronomy 31 6 through 8 and read it you will you will, we will hear the full promise given to joshua um and but that promise itself was also conditional It will help if I unmute it. You, me you mentioned in Ezekiel. You don't want to go ahead and read Ezekiel? Or you're going to skip that? Oh, yeah, 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 let's read Ezekiel first before we move away. So, yeah, let's read Ezekiel first. Ezekiel 11. Yeah, read um, Ezekiel 11. Yeah, let's read Ezekiel 11. Yeah, read Ezekiel 11. 5. 5. Just as you do. Sorry, just as you do not. 11. 5. Yeah. 11. 5, you said is. Ezekiel. So the Lord, the Lord Spirit took hold, took yeah. control of me, and told me to tell the leaders. So the the Spirit of the Lord took hold of Ezekiel um, and told him to go tell the leaders something. Uh, so so that's so in the old covenant, the the Spirit of the Lord came for a particular task, and when that task was done, the Spirit of the Lord left, even the best of them. Even the best of them, um, uh, and, and, and the, which were the the prophets, the prophets, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord will come upon them, and they will prof prophesy. And after the spirit of the Lord is gone, they were regular folks wow. again. And so um, that was the pattern. That was a pattern back then. Now. The, the, the prayer that, he, uh, that Solomon was praying, he was quoting out of um, the uh, book of Deuteronomy as well, when he says, as you were with our ancestors, may he never leave us nor forsake us. May he never leave us nor forsake us is reminding God of his promise in Deuteronomy uh, 31, 6 to 8. So if you want to read Deuteronomy uh, 31, Six to eight, would, we would see that promise there. Is that the promise going to go to the second question? We'll find out. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Okay, 31, uh, six through eight, uh, amplified. 
Be strong, courageous, and firm. Fear not, nor be in terror before them. For it is, it is the Lord, it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with this people, go unto uh, go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that does oh well, I switch versions. <laughs> oh sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, what, what happened? Okay, amplify. Be strong, courageous, and firm. Fear not, be not be in terror before them. What is the Lord your God who gives, who goes with you? He will not fail you or forsake you. And Moses called to Joshua and said to him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong, courageous, and firm, for you shall go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn sworn to their fathers to give them and you shall cause them to possess it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will march with you. He will not fail you or let you go or forsake you. Let there be no cowardice or flinching, but fear not, neither become broken, in spirit, depressed, dismayed, and unnerved with alarm. Amen. Okay, good. Now, this is, this is that promise that, um, that, uh, Philemon is is ask is reminding God of of, um, but this promise that God never uh, God will always be at their side. God will never abandon them. God will always be with with them. God will help them. The, all that promise is conditional on one thing. It's only on getting the land, or on uh, on being able to to um, uh, to get a, the Lord make a promise to Israel to to have this land and this uh, this land will someday belong to Israel all of that I will always be with you I will always support you I will never abandon you all of that was to get the land because and that's what God did that's what God uh, God will though this story this this promise was also repeated to Joshua in Joshua chapter one and God promised Joshua as I was with Moses so I will be with you I will never leave you I will never forsake you and God had to repeat that promise to Joshua because he was afraid and, and, and in that promise also in Joshua God was telling him don't be afraid don't be afraid be brave be strong don't be afraid the same thing God was telling the, the children of Israel you will inherit the land don't be afraid uh, I'm with you I'm at your side I will never abandon you and so, um, but the uh, but after the, they were in the land, after they had acquired the land, the pattern of the uh, the spirit of God was to come, and when they needed and to go, when uh, when he uh, saw it fit, and so it was appropriate for Solomon to, in this case, ask God to be with them, because the pattern was he would be with them when needed, and he would leave. When he did, when he wanted to leave, and so um, the, uh, the 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 answer to this question is it was appropriate because of the in the Old Testament in the Old Covenant the spirit came and came and went as needed. Now, however, in the New Covenant, what is the situation? In the New Covenant, there's a change. The spirit is, uh, is here to stay with the believer always, always. The spirit is not going to go, is not going, is not going to go and come uh, as he needed. He is, is there to stay with the believer always. And that you can see in Matthew 28, 20, Matthew 28, 20, uh, where uh, Jesus says, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So until he comes back physically, Jesus Christ has left the spirit here, uh, always at all times with the believer, okay? And so do you think it's appropriate to still ask God to be with us? It's a trick question. 
-hmm. If he's already always do we, do present today, if he's already always present, then there's no need to ask him to be with us because he's always there no matter what. And to and I think that's the issue with a lot of Christians. correct they correct God goes away when you know he's a part time God, but he's always there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the, the reason why I said it's a trick question uh, is, uh, and I will get to it more, uh, much more in the, um, in the, in the digging deeper um, thought, but the reason I said it's a trick question is that um, you can ask uh, the, the God be with you today only in the, if you're thinking of manifestation. Is not you should say, Lord, Lord, uh, Lord God, I know you're always with me, but Father, manifest your presence in this situation. Do you understand what I'm? What you? Yeah, you you it's your like uh, show show your hand. Yes, you're sir. saying, God, show your hand. You're saying, God, show your hand. Move in this situation. So you can ask. It's not that you're asking God to get out of heaven and come and. Uh, and be with you on earth. You know he's on earth. You know he's he's with you by the spirit. But you, if you, it's it's okay if you if if you ask him manifest your presence. I want to see your hand in this situation. I, and 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 that is a valid, a perfectly valid prayer. And and you're correct because a lot of but, times you pray like that. We're like Lord, I know you're watching me, but could you please? Show me a sign that I'm doing it the right way or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and uh, and and Paul, who I believe wrote the book of Hebrew, he he took the promise the promise in Deuteronomy um, uh, thirty one six through eight, uh -huh. where God was promising um, the the to be with them for the land. Uh, for the Christian, our land is our re uh, our rest is salvation, and Paul took that promise and released it over everybody in um, in, in, in Christendom. It released over every believer and said in Hebrews Hebrews thirteen five, um, um, has promised. It's the same promise in Deuteronomy. He's, he's speaking all over by the Spirit, but he's speaking by the Spirit over every believer now. And he says, for the Lord has promised he will never leave you and never forsake you. Now, he, he's not talking about land anymore. He's just talking about as a believer, your promise, just as uh, he didn't even quote Matthew 28, 20, Christ saying the same thing. He went and he took that Deuteronomy promise and released it over everybody by the power of the Holy Spirit and said, for the Lord God has promised he would never leave you nor forsake you. And that is so, so powerful because for them in Deuteronomy, it was conditional on getting into the land and inheriting the land. And it was, that was the context, but God just shipped the context off in Hebrew and just release that promise unto all of us. God has promised he will never leave us nor forsake us. I love it. I love God's promise. <laughs> I know. And when you think okay, about so, it, and I, and I tell people all the time, you know, they're like, I'm struggling. I don't know how to do it. I'm like, you know what? You're doing it wrong because God is there with you. So he's there and he knows what you're going through and he's not gonna let you go through something you know that you can't handle. Right. And it's it's important that we realize that God's presence always with us, constantly with us, and we have to rely on him constantly because without him, you know, we have nothing. And uh, I'm going into the yeah. what you think and dig deeper. So I'll let uh, I know you guys, I know you guys are eager to answer. What do you think? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I am eager to, to to answer that question because uh, I have a question on that question. Uh -huh. uh, so, so do you want to read that? What do you think? What In you what think? ways can Christians? Yeah. All right. All right. In, 
in what ways can Christians demonstrate better that God is with us? <laughs> I'm going to let you guys try to answer that question and then I'm going to switch that question around. <laughs> um, um, they can exercise their, um, their faith. Um, they can faith. demonstrate yeah, yes, but yes. by their faith, walking in their, you know, using their faith, applying their faith, and not just in it. It doesn't have to be big things; right. it to be the minute things, little thing. Because He wants to work in every area of our life, so we can exercise just applying the word in every area of our life with the little things to the big things. I love, I love that answer. Uh, and, 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 and I think I understand, I think I understand what this, this uh, Bible study um, uh, author was trying to get at. Uh, we mm -hmm. demonstrate that God is with us truly by prayer, just being aware of his mm -hmm. presence and talking to him all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like you said, in small things or in big things, uh, just exercise your faith to talk to him. And that is, that is the simplest way that we can demonstrate that we know that God is with us. When we're talking to him, uh, I mean, the world uh, will think, oh, you guys are crazy. What are you, what are you talking, who are you talking to? <laughs> Nobody is here. No, no. But when you exercise your faith and you are talking to God all the time, you are demonstrating that you know that he is with you. But the better question, this is why I said I'm going <laughs> to turn this question on, uh, uh, on its head. The better question is not demonstrating that God is with you, because to tell you the truth, the crazy man on the street talks to himself too, right? Yes, That's not the better way. Uh, yeah, the, the better question is how do we abide in his presence? How mm. do we uh, um, not just talking to God and exercising faith, uh, which is all good, which is all good. Uh, I'm not saying that any of that is bad, but how do we abide in that presence he in his presence all the time abide in his knowing that he's with us how do we abide in his presence always uh, and for that let's go to um to john 15. if we go to john 15 and i'm going to read out of the passion because i love the passion john in this 15. part of it you would, yeah. So uh, we know that God is with us. Instead of demonstrating to to um, to the world that He is with us, instead of demonstrating to somebody else that He's with us, um, let's bring it home. How do we abide in His presence, and what are the benefits of abiding in His presence, of remaining in His presence? What is that benefit? Otherwise, we're gonna um, we we, got, we are going to miss uh, miss the benefits or the reward of God being with us. We're gonna miss the reward reward of God being with us if we don't abide and make that connection and abide in His presence. So let's read um, John 15. I'm gonna read out of the Passion, and I'm gonna read slowly so because uh, Passion is. Uh, it's full of revelation. It says, uh, I am a, the true spouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my father. Cares for the branches connected to me. We are the believers connected to him. Uh, he, he, uh, so he tends, he cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you. You must remain in life union with me, for I remain in for I remain in life union with you. So this, I love the fact Jesus says, for I remain in life union with you. So it's not it's not so much as God just being with us as a spectator, Christ is saying, I remain with you. I am with you. I, God, be with you 
uh, in life union with you, but you must rep, uh, reciprocate. You must reciprocate. You must also remain in life union with me. It takes two to be in union. It takes two. So that's why I turn the question on, uh, on its head. God has no problem being with us. He has promised to be with us. But guess, guess what? Sometimes we, we can, we can uh, be severed from that, from that uh, presence um, and lose the benefit of the fact that he's right there. So he says, uh, Christ says, you must remain in life union with me for I remain in life union with you. For a branch severed, severed from the, from the vine will not bear fruit. And so your life will be fruitless unless you leave your life intimately joined to mine. So one of the benefits, one of the ways we can demonstrate that God is with us and we are with him <laughs> is that we bear fruit. We bear fruit. Uh, and if, we, if God is with us, but we are not with him, Jesus is saying here, your life will be fruitless. The life will be fruitless. So I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to explain uh, what it means to, be ab to abide in him. And, um, and I'm going to give you uh, a practical way of abiding in Christ. And I'm also going to give you a practical way of being savored from Christ. Because Jesus is saying both here. He says, you are branches, you are branches in me. I am the vine. He says, a, a branch that is savored from me will not bear fruit. Now, it doesn't say that uh, it will not go to heaven. It's saying that you can, you can still belong to me because I'm always... I'm always in life union with you, um, but you can still belong to me and not bear fruit because you, uh, you as a branch, are savored from me. And so, so this has nothing to do with heaven or not heaven, okay? This has to do with a fruitful life or a barren life. You can be a Christian and still live a barren life. You could, uh, and, and this is the reason, this is the, the, um, the secret, the secret to abiding in Christ. So it says, uh, five, I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness, fruitfulness will stream from within you. If you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness would stream from within you. But when you leave departed from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discarded, so the branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. This is not heaven, this is not hell, this is something to do with living on here, on earth here as a witness to the Lord. This, uh, living here on this side of eternity, uh, and being used of the Lord. And it says, if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you would ask whatever you desire and it will be done. Chin, the second benefit of abiding in Christ, of not, God, not only God being with us, but we being with God. Not only God abiding or living in life union with us, but we also abiding and living in life union with him. It's the two sides of the same coin. Uh, the, the benefit, so there are two benefits here. The first one is we become fruitful uh, and we, our lives become fruitful. And the second is we, we get answered prayers. We get answered prayers. When we, uh, um, it says, whatever you ask, whatever you desire, uh, when then you, you can ask whatever you desire and it will be done. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate, this is the, that, that word that uh, is in our digging deeper, 
you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my father. So, so um, we know that the intent of the um, of abiding in Christ is two benefits: the fruit, you bear more fruit, and and, and 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 that is also shown in the fruit of the spirit. We 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 have if the spirit is indeed in our lives, if this if the spirit is indeed um, abiding in us, and not just as a spectator, if he's in control. All right, the effect of the spirit in our lives, not just as a spectator, but being in control, would be the fruit of the spirit will be evident in our lives. And the fruit of the spirit, let's use the passion again, uh, is in Galatians 5, 22 to, uh, to 23. And I'll use the passion to read it. The fruit of the spirit, um, the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. And it says, these are the varied expressions. Joy that overflows, that will be a fruit in our life. Joy that overflows. Peace that subdues, that's another fruit in our life. Patience that, patience that endures, that's another fruit in our life. K kindness in action, that's another fruit in our life. A life full of virtue, uh, that's another fruit in our life. Faith, like you said, uh, Melody, faith that prevails, that's another fruit in our lives. Um, gentleness of heart, that's another fruit in our lives. Strength of the spirit, that's another fruit in our life. Mm -hmm. It says, never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. So never set the law above, uh, above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. So, the, so the, to demonstrate that God is with us and we are with God, it's, I, I keep saying it because it takes two, um, then we will have the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit in our life. Joy that overflows, peace, patience, kindness, virtue, faith, gentleness of heart. Oh, come on. My... Computer, I just acted up. Gentleness of heart, and um, what a, uh, there's not a, not enough memory. Oh my goodness. Let me see. One one thing you mentioned, yeah. you know, whatever whatever you ask, and I I know exactly what you're saying. Again, when we what he's not saying next for you know. God knows what our desires, and if we're in Christ, we're not going to ask for something that is not within his power. So, and, and as we was, we led by the Spirit, we know that we're going to be humble because we're following the Spirit. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. And, okay. Yeah. So and I, want, I just wanted to clarify that because people are going to say, so if I ask for a million dollars, you know, God's going to give it to you. It's within, you know, and I can honestly say God sometimes gives us stuff that we ask for knowing that it's not going to benefit us because he did that with the Israelites when they wanted a king. They prayed for the king, remember? And, they, and he said, okay, you want a king? I'm going to give you what you want. King Saul. So I... Yeah, but Veronica... I, I, I completely agree with you. I can, but uh, what, what I'm saying here is um, when the Holy Spirit is within you right. and in control, yes. you will and be I, praying I what you for the Holy Spirit within you is asking for. Right. Um, and I knew that, but I knew... So that's, why, yeah. that's, why, that's why... That's why uh, Christ didn't couch it. Christ, didn't, Christ did not did not limit that uh, Christ did not limit that um, that um, uh, that promise he didn't put a limit on that promise the reason why Christ didn't put a limit on that promise is because uh, if he if he's indeed abiding in you right. uh, and in control right. he'll be uh, he he'll be asking whatever he's asking he's act, asking it through you and of course, the, if the Holy Spirit is asking through you, 
if the father wants to to answer it the father wants to answer it so it's the 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 holy spirit is already the initiator right. of your request not your flesh but the holy spirit is the initiator of your request therefore the uh, the spirit of god uh, the god himself um, wants to answer it so that's why i'm doing the two face of the same coin um, that god is with us the holy spirit can be with us god can be in us and not be in control and that is still not that is not you abiding in him um, when the holy spirit is in control don't worry ask what you want and it will be done for you if the holy spirit is in control ask what we want and it will be done for you and so um and so those those two things a fruitful life and answered prayer is the ways we demonstrate that god is with us and we are with god and so uh, let's let's look at how how we uh, how we can be with god how do we practice what is a practical way of being with God, because it says, if my life, if my words abide in you, and if if my words live powerfully within you, um, all of that is so subjective that uh, how do I know how much? Uh, how do I know when I tr- cross the threshold of the word living powerfully in me? How do I know? Is it is it memorizing? A, um, a bunch of scriptures is it what what is the threshold of the word living powerfully in me um so i asked the lord um for another another yardstick another thing i i, I can I, I can i can look at myself and say oh, yes i'm abiding in christ or something i can i can believe on and i, I and i i know i'm abiding in christ i mean knowing that knowing that uh, believing that uh, that Christ died for me on the cross uh, and believing that he took all my sins away, believing that he was scorched and, uh, and his, uh, skin, uh, his skin was removed from his body uh, and his stripes, by his stripes I'm healed. Um, all of that is part of believing and his word believing powerfully in you, right? But how do I know I have arrived or I have gotten there? So um, God showed me this and it's in John 6, a practical way of abiding. John 6, verse 51 to 56. And as you open to that, I'm going to pray that God opens your eyes to, to, to Lord, Lord Holy Spirit, open the eyes of my friends to see what you showed me, the secret of abiding. And help me say this correctly. Say it well. Okay. So uh, John 6. 51 through 56. Hold on. Give us a minute. Yes. Give us a minute. I, I know you guys technology. We still dinosaurs too over here. Can't you hear the page <laughs> flipping? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give us a minute. John 6, 51. Forgetting there. All right, so we're going to read John six fifty one through fifty six. All right. Okay. And I'm going to read it out of the Passion again. I love Passion translation. It says, I alone, this is Jesus speaking, I alone am the living bread that has come to you from heaven. Eat this bread and you will live forever. The living bread I give you is my body, which I offer as a sacrifice so that all may live. These words of Jesus sparked an angry outburst amongst the Jews. They protested saying, does this man expect us to eat his body? Jesus replied to them, listen to this eternal truth. Unless you eat the body of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have eternal life. 
Eternal life comes to the one who eats my body and drinks my blood. And I will raise him on raise him up in the last day. <coughs> for my body is my body is real food for your spirit, and my blood is real drink. The one, and this is the key, the, the anchor, the one who eats my body and drinks my blood lives in me the another translation says abides in me and i abide in him or i live in him so the secret of abiding is contained in what is um reflected by the elements of communion so what do we what are we doing when we eat the body of christ and drink his blood at communion we are remembering, we are remembering the, um, the cross, what he did for us on the cross. And we are um, accepting the washing away of our sins by his blood and, um, and the, the exchange of our sins for his righteousness. We are accepting his righteousness. So when you live your life uh, in, in full view of the cross, when you live your life in full view, in full remembrance of the cross and what it has accomplished for you, you are essentially living, abiding in him and he is abiding in you. Live your life conscious of what Christ has attained for you on the cross. And, and, and if, if needed, take communion. If needed, I take communion as often as I, I remember uh, that, oh Lord, thank you for the cross. I take communion because communion is just saying, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the covenant in your blood, the new covenant in your blood. So when you're, and like Melody said, as you activate your faith, activate your faith in the finished work of Christ as you as you constantly are reminded of that as you constantly rejoice in that as you constant, constantly celebrate that fact you know the cross of Christ was for you and enjoy that uh, that um, realization that all your sins are forgiven or your, that you have the righteousness of God, that the righteousness belong to Christ now belongs to you, which is the righteousness of God himself now belongs to you as you rejoice in the things that he ha has been accomplished for you. Uh, you are abiding in him and he is abiding in you. And guess what? God's, God's promises as you abide in him and you abide as, as he abides in you and you abide in him, God says you will bear more, much fruit because then the Holy Spirit would be able to, be in, in that mode of rejoicing, that mode of joy, that mode of peace, that mode of righteousness, the Holy Spirit will be able to direct you to do this and do that, give you the desire to do it, give you the, the wherewithal, the strength to accomplish what he wants to do. And that will make your life fruitful and that will make your life, um, that would demonstrate the fact that the spirit is in your life. And I want, to, I want to share one thing with you. This will happen without you even being aware of it. That is a clencher. That is a clencher. This will happen just like the, the tree, the branches of the tree does not strain to bring forth the fruit. Um, the fruit of the fruit of the Holy Spirit being in your life will not be a strain to you when you keep the cross of Christ for a fall in your in your eyes in your spiritual eyes when you keep that revelation of how much of how much God has done for you by the cross foremost in your heart in your in your spiritual eyes um, the fruit of the Spirit would come without effort, without effort. It would come without you being aware of it. And it reminds me about uh, when Jesus was talking about the goats and the sheep. 
this thing. It says, as many as uh, did the things, and uh, you've done, as many as you uh, as, as 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 you have done these things unto the list of, of them, you have done it unto me. Those people, those sheep, were not aware that they were doing anything. They were just living life, but they were living life uh, as a sheep. They were living life um, directed by the Holy Spirit. A sheep is directed by the Holy Spirit. They uh, they were living life. Um, um, in, in light of what God had done for them. They were living life uh, with God, with Christ as their shepherd. They were living life and they did all these things. They were not even aware they were doing all these things. So, and, and that, come, that um, goes to reason because God promises that it is him the spirit of God, the work in you. It's God at work in you. First to will, first to wish and desire it. That's why I, I told Verena, don't sweat the promise. Uh, it's the uh, Holy Spirit at work in you. First to desire the request that you're asking. And it is the Holy Spirit also at work in you uh, to fulfill it, to give you the power to do those things. Um, and so that was what God showed me about the secret of abiding. So next time I, I am worried, am I abiding? Am I, I just take the communion. I just take communion. I say, Lord, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. I take the, uh, the wine. I said, Lord, thank you for the, for the uh, covenant that I'm in you and you are in me. And that brings it full circle and brings me back into abiding in him and he abiding in me. So that is a practical way of abiding. Now, there's a warning that of being severed. Uh, what is the practical way of not abiding? What is the practical way of being severed by the, from, from the spirit? And the practical way of being severed by, uh, from the spirit is in Galatians 5. If we can go to Galatians 5, verse 4. Okay, we got three minutes. Oh, okay. Let me read it real fast. Uh, it says, Galatians verse, chapter 4, verse 4. Uh, it's, yeah, verse 5. And I'm reading out of uh, the, the passage. If you want to be made, if you want to be made right with God by fulfilling the obligations of the law, you are cut off more than your you you have cut off more than your flesh you have cut off yourself from Christ and fallen away from the revelation of Christ so when you uh, when you put yourself on the law and you uh, don't forget the law is from God is good but it can make you, it cannot make you good because it doesn't impart any strength in, to you. The law is holy, but it, 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 it cannot make you holy because it doesn't give you the, the wherewithal, the strength to be holy. And the, and, the, and the law is righteous, but it cannot make you righteous because again, it does not give you any strength to attain its standards. But when you put yourself on the law, you, 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 you stir up your flesh. You stir up your... Uh, a bit, your your small soul strength. You what you, you soul discipline, the will. You stir up your will to do, and you you put yourself under 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 uh, under um, the law. It's like dieting. Um, it, it would work for a little while, but then it, you will run out of your strength. You will run out of your strength. But if you re rely on the spirit of God and you just say, Lord, I have fulfilled the law because Christ fulfilled the law, the law for me. So I receive it from Christ. When you receive it from Christ, you don't have to, you don't have to do it in, uh, on your own anymore. Guess what? That would, the, 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 the requirements of the law is fulfilled in us. Fulfilled in us, not by us, but fulfilled in us when we, when we rest in the spirit, 
when we rest in what Christ has done, that he has fulfilled the law. I'm glad you said that because so, again, you're going to, um, yeah, like you said, and I, you know, 12, 15 already, but to fulfill it again, and I'm glad you said everything that happens when we pray, there's within us, and like you said, we, and I want to make sure that everybody understood that we're not going to pray worldly, for worldly things if that's not God's will. So I wanted everybody to understand that. And like you said earlier, we have to rely on God because, but like you said, he is the ultimate. You know, he paid, he does the, all the you know, laws. He's able to keep them. We cannot keep them on our own. And I keep telling people, we have to stop the I, I, I. And we have to start the we, 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 because it's me and God. It's not just I, I, I. So we have to remove that. Um, excellent. Um, like I said, it's 1215. It's over 1215. We're not going to go no further than this. We're going to pick up next week on question 58. And we're going to go back into it because that's going to talk a lot of what we just talked about today. So we do more of it again next week. For those who want additional, be deep, deep, dig deeper, listen to our video next week. But we're going to close out this week with our weekly closing prayer. When you study the Bible, time goes by really fast. Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, I tell you. I tell you. So. So we're going to, like I said, we've only done two scriptures, but we got a, a whole life work message right here. The prayer is, our Father, we praise you as one who has never failed one word of all your good promises. We cherish your promise never to leave or forsake us. We praise you as the one who is faithful, but we are not. Renew us by your spirit so that we may have the desire and power to walk in your ways. We pray this so that the world may know you and your son. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.